Hey guys, welcome back to Joanne's Learning Hub. Today we would be learning about biological molecules and enzymes. The topics we would be covering today are carbohydrates, their tests and functions, fats, their tests and functions, proteins, their tests and functions, then um, all about enzymes, the lock and key model and the properties of enzymes. All living things are made up of water as well as the three main organic compounds carbohydrates fats and proteins so let us start off with carbohydrates now carbohydrates are, have contain three elements the carbon hydrogen and oxygen carbohydrates can be monosaccharides disaccharides or polysaccharides now monosaccharides means simple sugars an example of monosaccharides is glucose and even fructose so these simple sugars they are small they are soluble in water and they taste sweet disaccharides are complex sugars and they are again soluble in water and they taste sweet examples of disaccharides include sucrose maltose and lactose now polysaccharides are very large sugar molecules examples of polysaccharides are starch cellulose and glycogen so starch can be found in plant cells uh, mainly it is stored in the seeds and tubers of plants cellulose is found in plant cell walls and glycogen is found in animal cells most polysaccharides are insoluble and they do not taste sweet so now carbohydrates are used to provide energy carbohydrate used in re respiration as we all know is glucose glucose is transported in plants as sucrose and in animals as glycogen so testing for carbohydrates so carbohydrates are also known as reducing sugars and to test for reducing sugars we can conduct the benedict's test so in a sample of um, carbohydrate solution we can add the benedict solution which is originally blue in color and heat it in a water bath that is set to around 80 degrees celsius so if the test is positive uh, it will turn red red whereas if the test is negative or which means it has no reducing sugar present it will remain blue moving on to fats now fats are also known as lipids if we see the molecule of a fat uh, it contains one molecule of glycerol attached to three uh, molecules of fatty acids fats contain three elements carbon hydrogen and oxygen so this is similar to uh, carbohydrates fats are insoluble in water and when fats are liquid at room temperature they are called oils functions of fats now fats just like carbohydrates they are used to release energy but the cells use fats when all the available carbohydrates in the body has been used up for example mammals store fats and oils in their body in a layer of cells called adipose tissue so this adipose tissue also insulates the mammal's body plants store fats and oils in their seeds which becomes a good store of energy for germination So how do we test for fats and oils? We do the ethanol emulsion test. So fats can dissolve in ethanol, but it cannot dissolve in water. So if the food contains fat, the emulsion of fat droplets will form in the ethanol water mixture, which will look white and opaque. But if the fat is not present, the solution will remain transparent. Proteins all contain carbon, hydrogen. oxygen and nitrogen atoms however some proteins also contain sulfur atoms so protein molecules are made up of long chains of smaller molecules which we call amino acids there are 20 or more types of amino acids present so functions of proteins proteins are soluble in water but some are insoluble these proteins are used to make new cells Uh, like cell membrane and cytoplasm they are also present in antibodies all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes so we can perform the biorec test for proteins 
we add a few drops of potassium hydroxide solution uh, to make the solution alkaline then we add some copper sulfate solution which is bright blue color so if there is no protein the solution will stay blue but if protein is present the solution will turn purple so the positive test for uh, the biotic test is purple which indicates that protein is present we can test for starch using iodine so if uh, the iodine on the uh, sample will turn blue black that shows that starch is present whereas if it just remains brown that means starch is not present we do the dcpip test for vitamin c so dcpip solution is originally blue in color but when if vitamin c is present it turns from blue to colorless enzymes so enzymes are proteins that act as biological catalysts in all metabolic reactions so what is a catalyst then a catalyst is a substance which increases the rate of reaction without being changed or used up in the reaction for example uh, the protease enzymes breaks down proteins to amino acids amylase enzyme breaks down starch to maltose Catalase enzyme breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Now enzyme can also be used to build up from the smaller molecules. For example, starch phosphorylase builds starch molecules from the glucose molecules in plants. So how can we name enzymes? All enzymes you must remember end with the suffix "ase." So there is carbohydrate enzyme. protein proteases enzymes and lipases for example now an example of a carbohydrate enzyme is amylase maltase and sucrase uh, protease enzyme it breaks down proteins and lipase enzyme breaks down the fats now you must remember that an enzyme shape lets it catalyze reaction a substrate is a molecule that is changed in a reaction so the part of the enzyme where this substrate binds is known as the active site and the shape of the active site is complementary to the shape of the substrate so that the substrate and the active site can bind and uh, when the substrate molecule binds to the active site it is changed to a product and then released when the substrate binds to an enzyme we call it an enzyme substrate complex before it is converted into products so what are the properties of enzymes as i said before all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes enzymes are made inactive or they are denatured with high temperatures so this denatured basically means that the shape of the enzyme's active site changes so it can no longer bind to the substrate because it is no longer complementary to the shape of the substrate which is why it cannot uh, uh, catalyze reactions all proteins are damaged with excess heat enzymes work best at an optimum temperature Usually most enzymes work best at 37 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Enzymes also work best at a certain pH. So the uh, usual pH is 7, but few enzymes can work better in either acidic or alkaline conditions. Enzymes are catalysts because they speed up reactions, but they do not change themselves. And enzymes are specific because they can only catalyze one kind of chemical reaction so now here is a sample question explain why the rate of an enzyme control reaction is slow at low temperatures so at low temperatures the molecules have lower kinetic energy so will hit each other with lesser kinetic energy this is why the rate of reaction is low because the enzyme will bump into its substrate less often so that is the end of today's video do remember to like share and subscribe to my 